if you didn't have a vivid imagination, you couldn't do my job. The scope and the grandeur of what we're setting out to do, it's remarkable. VFX brings all the components that can't be shot in the normal course of production. Whether it's adding characters, or whether it's adding environments, whether it's completing sets, whether it's creating whole scenes. There are worlds that are much larger than we can manufacture on a soundstage or even at a location. And visual effects adds that end of the storytelling, allows us to see Jamie on a ship sailing into King's Landing Harbor, Danny riding off on a fire-breathing dragon. In season four, when we were just beginning to conceive for Watchers on the Wall, the attack on the ice wall, we didn't have a space that was nearly big enough or nearly enough people to execute this episode-long sequence. We needed a green screen that was bigger than anything that had ever been built, 30 feet high and 400 feet long. I thought, there's no way that this is going to happen. Now I've gone too far. And that same day, Bernie was ordering the screens to be built, and I really knew what the commitment level was of this show to make what's on on the page and therefore the next year I said now what we need to do is to get a flamethrower that shoots 50 feet strap it to a robotic crane and put it in a bull ring in Spain and hit 20 people with it what do you think and there we were and we did it so on we go there's never gonna be another job like this The visual effects industry has become very computer-reliant and technological, but one of the things we like to rely on is shooting organic elements. When we shoot our fire-breathing dragons, we shoot fire. You get the light reacting the way it would and should. You get the interaction between the fire and the stunt players. When one one is shot, we want one one to look twice as big, so the camera needs to be half as high and half as far away. Shooting 1-1 one -one is a really joyful experience because of the suit performer, Ian White. Any large character in an A-level movie is probably Ian. We wanted a large performer because somebody who would be 14 feet tall would have more weight and mass to move around, and a person who's a normal size would have a very difficult time pulling that off. There's a great deal of time spent figuring out the camera angles and the camera lenses, all of which is based on the creative process and first starting out in previs, where you're basically a one-person film crew in a box where you can build the set and light the set and create the characters and move them around. But then you have to sit down and figure it out. We don't make up hardly anything, you know, we always draw from the real world. We do a lot of reference by looking at how birds of prey behave and how certain lizards and reptiles behave. The best compliment that we can receive in visual effects is to be invisible. You know, if anything behaves in a strange way, it doesn't only blow the shot, it blows the scene. We can't cause the audience to blink at any point, so our work has to really, really be great. And that's, you know, grown as the things that we need to depict have gotten bigger. Every skirmish has gotten bigger, then it was larger armies, then larger armies, then larger armies. Our dragons have quintupled or more in size. The show seems to be a lot bigger than it used to be. We're shooting three units. We used to shoot two units. Our team has had to grow to keep pace with it. It's grown every year anyway, but this year it's kind of exploded. I have a buddy of mine who's producing the visual effects on a giant movie, and I asked him how many units they have. He said, what do you mean? We just have one unit. <laughs> it's like, really? The hardest aspect of my job is, especially as the seasons grow in scope, is to keep my arms around it all. We had 800 shots in season three. We had over 2,000 last year. We shoot on multiple continents. We have five directors, all highly creative people. So you've got five kitchens churning away. The only thing that's not more is the time. Each season has introduced a new problem for us to solve, whether it was a giant on a mammoth or skeleton whites coming out of the ground or various battles. This season employs all of those. The scope and the grandeur of what we're setting out to do and the just sheer destruction of it all is much more outlandish and outrageous in season six.